Okay, we're fine. Okay. Good evening. I'd like to call the regular monthly meeting of the village board together on Tuesday, September 15th at 6 p.m. Would you please uh, join me in a roll call, please? Reno? Here. Baker? Here. Hurdle? Here. Bell? Here. Duffy? Here. Padanko? Here. And Nino? Here. Everyone's here. Great. Uh, please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Approval of the agenda. No so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approve of the minutes as published. I will make that motion, Dave. Is there a second? I'll second. Any changes, additions, deletions? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Are there any comments from the public about a non-agenda item? Does anybody in the public care to speak about a non-agenda item? <coughs> Bo, do you see anybody asking? Nope. Okay. Correspondence. Janelle, would you review the two items of correspondence, please? Sure. Um... There was an email and an accompanying letter from Annie Miller, the chair of the Door County Coastal Byway Commission. In that correspondence, she requests that the village include $300 in support for the commission in its 2021 budget. There was also an email from Barbara Davis. In her email, Ms. Davis voices concerns about the fact that there was a group of protesters in Sister Bay when she was up here on vacation. And then thirdly, there was a letter from Donald and Jacqueline Polzine. In their letter, Mr. and Mrs. Polzine state that they were disappointed that the zoning for the Little Sister Road property was not changed to accommodate the purchase of a portion of the Little Sister Resort. Tasha, do we have generally in our budget for this coming year, the $300 for the coastal byways? Yes, we do. Okay, thank you. Anybody want to add any correspondence? Okay, move along to new business. Discussion regarding an update on the village's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, consider a motion for action if necessary. Um, I don't have a lot to add uh, from the county perspective other than that everybody has been seeing, of course, the definitely rising increase in the cases. Instead of one every now and then, we're eight, 10 a day. Um, I think, and this is not anybody saying this, but I think it just stands to reason that given the last several weeks up here, how busy it has been uh, and the number of the volume of people in and around Door County and all of its establishments, um, I don't think you could probably expect anything less than to see a rising count uh, on our COVID-19 cases. I do know that public health continues to do their tracking. Uh, they try and, and run down any outbreaks. I have, I have not heard from public health. Um, that there's an outbreak, an undefined outbreak, or, or an outbreak that they have been able to um, track. Of course, there is community spread, uh, but I do know they continue to get calls um, from other health departments after people have left um, Door County, either vacationing or visiting, to let us know that, uh, you know, the example I always use is when they call back and said they were on a trolley with 20 people last Sunday, and uh, they're trying to do contact tracing on those 20 people. So that's what uh, our health department continues to run into. Obviously with the increased case count, uh, they remain extremely busy on the, on the tracking side. So questions, other comments? I think we're gonna continue to see this go on for at least you know, the next several weeks. Uh, yeah. the rising caseload. I also saw a news report today that Wisconsin is probably going to be put back on the 14-day quarantine uh, by Illinois or by Chicago. 
not 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 Illinois, but by Chicago, uh, because of our, our rising caseload or case count, and that I think comes out on Thursdays. So we'll find out if we're back on that case. Uh, but Wisconsin is now one of the hot spots uh, in the country if you look at the national map and and their color coding of it. We are one of uh, four states in the red at the moment. If there's no thing else to discuss that, we'll move to item number two. Discussion regarding potential extension of the village of Sister Bay's declaration of public health emergency, consider a motion for action if appropriate. Um, as per our last couple of months, I would like to see us extend it by another 30 days, um, given where we're at and continue things, get things continue to happen. I do know also that there is additional funds. I think we spoke about this last time, but there's additional funds now. Uh, that the federal government has given to the state. And um, I understand that the governor uh, is going to work with the counties association, as I understand it, to try and look at getting more of the that funding into local communities. So if we're going to- make the, I'll make the motion to extend the uh, declaration. I'll, I'll second. Okay, can you, Janelle, can you tell us when our current designation goes to? The current one goes to September 27th, so 30 days from then is October 27th. Okay, okay, so that's what we would do, make it till October 27th. And I think everybody's also curious to see what's gonna happen with the mask mandate. Um, come September 28th, I'm sure the governor will say something prior to the 28th um, to see if, if they're gonna, continue that or, or or not but any other discussion or questions on it if not all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed thank you discussion regarding recommendation from the plan commission that the village board pass and adopt resolution 438091520 that approves a csm that splits the property located at 10 315 Orchard Drive with an assigned parcel number 18100831283434C2, which is owned by Deborah Homan in such fashion that it will contain a 5.0006 acre parcel and a 6.501 acre parcel, and also pass and adopt ordinance number 274091520 that amends the zoning map for the village of Sister Bay in such fashion that Ms. Homan's newly created parcels are rezoned from countryside one to residential three. Consider a motion for action if appropriate, and I apologize if I pronounced your name correctly. So moved. Second. Denise, can you give us a little explanation? I know I, I saw the, the paperwork. I can do that if you want. Okay, yeah, just, just a brief overview. Yeah, I'll make it brief. Um, so you've seen a similar uh, CSM request last year on the same property. Um, the property owner sold a portion last year and um, changed the zoning on it from CS1 to R3. Uh, she's looking to do the same thing on another portion of the property um, from CS1 to R3. Uh, looks like that it's the same thing. It's gonna be sold uh, for another house to be built. It all meets the requirements of the new zoning. It's in the packets if you have any questions. Okay. And it did go through the Planning Commission and public hearing? It did. Okay. Some of this I'm saying for the benefit of people that are on via phone and don't have the agenda or have the packet in front of them. That's why I'm asking for the explanations. Yep. Okay. Any other questions or comments? If not, all in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item number four, discussion regarding the plat which was submitted by representatives of Northern Door Properties LLC for parcel number 18100531284 b one which property has been assigned an address of 10678 North Bayshore Drive and is commonly referred to as the Cedar Shops property. And review of resolution number 43909520, which approves the plat. Consider motion for action if appropriate. I need some clarification, Dave. Either yes. I missed this at Plan Commission. Um, <clears throat> on page 36, it shows the, um, a placement of a shed near the northern property line. 
And then on page 37, the shed is on the southern property line. Is, is it being moved? Which is correct? Um, Britt, are, are you on the phone? Are you, are you able to speak? Yes. Did you want to give some detail on that about the shed? Uh, the shed is being completely removed from the property. And that was stated in the planning commission meeting. Not sure why it landed on the south side. I, I believe it, this is Amy Sullivan. I'm Brent's attorney. The um, the page thirty seven is the unit floor plans, and I, I don't think it's intended to be uh, geographically accurate. The the purpose of page thirty seven is to show the the floor plans of any structure that's currently on the property. So I don't think it was intended to, to appear like it was on the southern border of that property on page 37. It was just supposed to show the unit floor plan, but as Britt described, it's, a, it's going to be removed from the property eventually anyways. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No. If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Did we have a motion? motion? I don't think we had a motion. I'm no. sorry, I thought we did. <laughs> okay, we uh, could use a motion in a second. I'll make the motion. <laughs> I can. I'll second it. Okay, we will revote. <laughs> now that we have a proper motion in a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, Thank you. You. you guys are aware um amy sullivan is going to see that that plat is recorded normally the register of deeds will do that but there's some um extenuating circumstances and some things that have to be done first so she'll see that that's recorded and provided to us in as timely a fashion as possible is that okay Item number five, discussion regarding recommendations from trustee Chad Kadunko has made concerning appointments to the Friends of Pebble Beach ad hoc committee consider a motion for action if appropriate. What do you got, Chad? Well, I have five and uh, um, John McMurray, uh, had, I got a letter, an email on Friday with interest. I don't know if John's listening right now. Um, I have no problem adding a six and having him in there. It's not like I expect a lot of controversial votes or, or things of that nature if you guys are, are willing to let me have six on there instead of five. I don't know if that has any uh, bearing, but otherwise I do have five chosen before John um, express interest. Just personally, just in general, I like to have the odd number. You never know when you're gonna end up with a tie vote and a yep. losing motion. Okay. Um, well, we'll keep it where it's at, John. Our, our intention is to include a lot of people in on this and to kind of create a friends group. So. It's not going to be just a limited thing to these five people. Um, okay. So I'll, re I'll reach out to you and talk uh, shortly. Um, okay. But I got Kathy Anquist to serve uh, as a village resident, a former board member, uh, Lydia Simo, who uh, is, is Bo's lady, and she is the um, coordinator of, uh, for Egg Harbor Environmental and Sustainability, and I thought that was a good fit. Um, I got Miles Danhausen into it, so I can use his uh, connections to put pressure on uh, you know, getting word out on things. And Andrew Goldsworthy, Goldsworthy, who's a small business owner, a Liberty Grove resident. Um, his, you probably don't know him, but his, um, his wife is Kendall Johnson. Uh, he's a good guy and I think uh, looking to get involved in things as a, a community member. So I feel good about who we have and um, I definitely will reach out to you, John. Dave? Yes. If... Um... If Chad really wants to have John McMurray on there, could he be considered an ad hoc? And that way, if they ever have a quorum issue, he could become a voting member? You could do that as a, um, I wouldn't call it an ad hoc, um, as an alternative, an alternate. You could an do alternate. that. I'm or sorry, you could, yes, that's what I meant. Or yeah. you could bring it up, or you could bring it up to seven people. Well, I could always add another. Um, John, can you, can, you, can you be heard here? Is he online? I see a John M. I see John M. I don't know if it's him, but he's muted. Uh, 
I can't unmute him, but I sent the request. Oh, here it is. There you go. He muted himself again. Okay. Well, you can speak with him and, and we'll talk about it. And yeah. if you want to make it seven, then we'll come back at the next board meeting uh, with the recommendations and with the with the committee structure for approval. Uh -huh. That sounds good. I mean, the goal really is to have more involvement. So if there's people that want to be involved, I don't want to necessarily limit it. So thank you. Yeah. Any questions? No. Okay, item number six, discussion regarding the provisions of ordinance 275-091520, which amends and recreates chapter six of the village's sister bay municipal code alcoholic beverages consider a motion for action if appropriate please did you want to talk about this one you can you can run with it heidi well i don't have a whole lot to say i i think i laid out everything in the board report there in your packet fairly well but i'll entertain questions if you have questions i did have one question. I'm trying to think where my note is here. On page 72, line, hmm, I don't know. Anyway, it was the quotas that said two class B licenses and one reserve class B license. That's all we have. I was confused by that. So there's a quota system for the state of Wisconsin. You're only allowed so many based on your population and Sister Bay had only two. Um, but then in 1998, uh, the Tavern League stepped in and was able to get one reserve license for the municipalities. So that's where we, we're at. If we have a huge population boom and get a bunch more people in Sister Bay, there's a possibility that we could add another to our quota. Okay. Heidi, do you know what the you know what the population requirement is per license? Five hundred people. Okay. Got to start building some housing. <laughs> You're a, you have a good start with all those apartments on Glen Lane. I've had a ton of voter registrations. Good, good. <laughs> I think just to to quantify. Um, or to expand maybe on Vivian's question, we have many more licenses than that in the village. That was my, that's what I was thinking. Okay, yes. But what is, but they're all different kinds of licenses. Okay, so the yeah. people that hold those licenses are Husby's, The Bowl, and Little Sister Resort. And then there are different licenses let's say just for um, retail, like the pig or myself. Um, and then there are um, some people who hold wine and beer licenses, as long as that they have a restaurant. So it's all the different types of restaurants, but a true bar class B license and the reserve, we're only allowed three. Okay. Yeah, it did seem to me there were a lot more places than that. That was my question. So like the boathouse, obviously they are a restaurant. So that's in chop. They obviously have liquor licenses, but that's a different. Yeah, because right. those the, are those definition, above quota licenses? Yeah, the definitions referred to some state thing. And I was like, I don't. Yes, the boathouse and chop are the above quota licenses because they are 300 seat restaurants. Okay. And that language that we added for above quote of that wasn't in the, the code before. So just wanted to add some clarification by using those those words. Okay. Anybody else? Do we have a motion and a second? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay. Report on county activities from County Supervisor Dave Lino. Today we had our administrative meeting um, today, so our county, the county board is next week. Um, we're moving very rapidly into budget time. Today the admin committee forwarded to the county board for their perusal and approval next week. Um, 
part-time pay rates, uh, pay rates for um, limited term employees, uh, as well as uh, last, last time we met, we also put personnel positions in place, uh, either additions or deletions by department, and they all have to be, you know, go through the process to be added to be put in place after the 1st of January. So that's kind of where the, the budget is at the county level now. It's on the personnel side. Uh, the capital equipment was done last month, or capital plan was done last month. Um, in October, all those plans will come together. It'll be submitted much like we do for the village uh, for the public hearing, and then a budget hearing uh, in November is when that would be passed or approved. The, it looks like, I probably shouldn't even say this, but at the moment, it looks like we're gonna have a decreasing tax rate uh, for next year uh, moving forward. I think everybody was a little surprised. We're doing a little bit better financially this year than we anticipated given the COVID issues. Um, so it's not quite as um, tight or under budget that we thought uh, we were going to be. Um, so that's a good thing. And if you have any questions that about that or, or other issues concerning the county, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Okay. Discussion regarding and confirmation of President Leno's recommended appointments. There are none tonight until Chad comes back and we have something lined up for the hopefully the plan commission next month. Report by village administrator on village activities and projects. Yeah, so this one's rather short. Um, just to summarize it, been really busy. Um, I'm looking to do some staff performance reviews. Um, this is something that's going to be coming new to the organization. Um, I want to make this annual, but do it around June, uh, May or June annually. Um, I have two different sets of reviews, one for management level and one for their staffing level. Um, this is something that I think is really important and it really sets goals and parameters for people to start moving and start, you know, having management challenge staff to meet new goals and, and keep them driven and focused. Um, the next thing I did submit um, our Northern Door site tours. Um, I've got a couple of them out there. Uh, I don't know whether we're doing them virtually or in person. I have yet to hear from that, um, but either way I'm available on October 8th in case there are developers who want um, a tour. Um, so I'll be there to help answer any questions on any sites that they're interested in or have, you know, other questions for. Um, the last thing that I have in here, um, just a number of uh, zoning things have come up uh, besides zoning enforcement, a lot of people calling and asking questions um, or getting some clarification on the codes. Um, I know our planning commissions asked me to uh, work on getting definitions for hotels, motels and condominiums. Uh, still working on that. Um, I have sent out several enforcement letters on some things in the village, um, still working to get those resolved. Um, but so far, I mean, this has just been a, a busy time for the village through COVID. I mean, a lot of uh, developers still interested in building a lot of the current projects still moving forward. Um, so, you know, I'll be happy to answer any questions that anyone has. I was curious, you mentioned in here food trucks. Has there been discussion at one of the committees about food? Planning Commission, I guess? Um, no, it hasn't come up, but it's something that um, our ordinance, we need to maintain and stay ahead of um, due to some recent litigation in other communities. So I've been working really hard to get uh, the food truck ordinance updated to make sure that we are in the best possible position moving forward. Um, Pat, up Pat in parts. can we have Randy tell us about the food truck issue at Gibraltar since he was directly involved in that? Sure, I'll be happy to do that. And by the way, I was, I was the local briefcase carrier. <laughs> the guys from Washington, D.C. Were, uh, were driving the bus on this, but they needed local counsel, so here I was. But in any event, very interesting case. Uh, they, they took on the Gibraltar food truck ordinance, which essentially said no food trucks could be used in the town of Gibraltar. As a matter of fact, no mobile vending of any kind. Any, anything on wheels was prohibited. And uh, that ran afoul, according to Judge Ehlers of the Wisconsin and federal constitutions. And he found the ordinance to be invalid and is putting an injunction in place, preventing them from enforcing it. So I, following that, had some discussion with Dave and then uh, proceeded to send copies to, to Bo and, and Denise indicating that Sister Bay's food truck ordinance 
could be interpreted in the same way and we may want to make some adjustments to that to make sure that it's not an outright ban of food trucks but a regulation of food trucks which is permissible yep randy are you aware if there's going to be an appeal or not at this point i don't know the, the town had a meeting uh, I, I think it was was it Monday night or it might have been last Wednesday night um, already to, to discuss that. And it was a closed session meeting. They haven't revealed whether they're appealing or not. Okay. The only reason that I ask, because I think it's my understanding that um, uh, the decisions that Judge Ehlers makes when they're appealed, more than 50% of the time they're overturned is what his record is, correct? You know, I don't know by numbers. Um, I've seen him be uh, upheld many times. Haven't seen a lot of reversals, but uh, you know, I, I've not seen any numbers in that regard. Okay. He wrote a very, very complete, and from what I see, very supportable decision um, that I, I would be surprised if it was overturned, but it wouldn't. Um, I mean, anything's possible in court proceedings. If it does get appealed, it's likely to be appealed to the Court of Appeals and then also to the Supreme Court. Whoever wins or loses at that, at the next level would likely go on to the, the state Supreme Court. Okay, I thought Dave had mentioned when he first um, shared that news with me is that um, he threw out the the whole ordinance. Do you remember exactly what you told me, Dave? And I was, and we were questioning how he could do that because the rest of an ordinance, it, and we have it in our own zoning code that if there's something um, illegal about it, it doesn't. You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. All the other things still stand. Do you remember you and I having that conversation? Yeah, I think, and I'm interpreting what Randy told me, I think what I was trying to say was, um, I believe they put that ordinance in place after the fact, after they had already gotten state permits and, co and county permits to operate the food truck, they came and put an ordinance in on top of that and said, no, no, you can't do that. Okay, okay. And that's the part that got tossed. Okay, thank you so, for clarifying that. Do you think in going through this, Randy, that if we were to allow some small number that it would be more defensible? Absolutely. The, the reason, I, I can tell you this from what I have seen of these, this is a um, Institute for Justice group from, from Washington DC. And the reason yeah. they were so excited to take this case on was because it was an absolute ban on food trucks. Most places just try to regulate them. Well. Gibraltar went a little bit too far. They just said no food trucks at all. And that's what drew the attention of this group to come in to, to challenge it. Had it been an ordinary run of the mill regulation, even if it's very difficult to, to sell food or to sell materials through a food truck because of the ordinance, it would not have been challenged in all likelihood. Okay. You know, well, you can limit how they do business and you can limit where they do business. Okay. Well, I think it's good to be prepared. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Pat. Um, I think it's good to be prepared and to have an ordinance at least ready to go that's that regulates it and puts restrictions on for the village so that if we need to, you know, we have that. Pat, yeah. if you know me at all, I'm all over this. Okay. Well, I'm just going to say that several times this summer, if you wait until six o'clock and now you want to try to get something to eat, many places would have had turned off the ability for pickup ordering uh places had one and a half to two hour waits some of the pizza places said yeah our first pickup is 9 p.m given our, our our restaurants are awesome and they're great and they're doing a super job but given the volume of people we have around here and what's going on with this virus we went down to bailey's harbor several times this year and they've got a couple of food trucks and you walk up, you place an order, you go socially distant, you go pick it up, you can eat there, you can take it wherever you want. It, it's a filler 
to keep people happy. And, and I just think it's something that we should consider. I, I agree 100%. We can't, we can't keep our heads in the sand on this one. And there are things we need to consider. Um, yeah, we don't want them parking at the beach and a lot of things. I mean, I'm not even going to get into, but the idea that we don't have anything uh, for this is just, yeah. it's negligence on our part. We'll come up with the criteria, just, just like anything else. And so a permit any... structure and where and mm -hmm. how they would be able to operate. So to give you an idea, some communities do where it's only allowed on private property with their permission, or it's only allowed in designated areas or a specific area, certain times of operation, a permit needs to be done. They need to have all the state licensing. They need all, you know, by doing that, you really bathrooms available. There's a lot of things you can put in there. Yeah. So, we're, so we will, we will work through this and the plan commission will work through it. Yeah. Anything else on Bo's report? Yes, I had, um, Bo stated something when he was talking about uh, the reviews and making sure that um, the village's employees um, stay driven and focused. Um, do we have any issues? No, it's not that we have. I thought that was an odd thing to say because I think everybody is doing a, a terrific job and that to me implied that, you know, they're not getting things done. No, and it, and it was no way a, a bash on our, on our team here. I think our team's doing an amazing job, but we've added, you know, several new employees. We're going through some turnover and I think it's good that we, you know, as an organization, you know, stay on top of where, you know, set goals and parameters, know where people are in the organization and make sure that they continue to grow and learn more and make sure that they're challenged. You know, I, it's, it's always my goal as an administrator to make sure that people, you know, are, are happy in their position and they have, you know, c continuous challenges instead of getting stagnant. So I definitely don't think this is a, in a way to punish anybody. I think it's a way for me to understand where people are in the organization and where they want to be. So at some point, would you relay to the personnel committee what your either intention is to do before it happens or after the fact, what was the result of it that there's some so, dissemination of information to the, the board or personnel? So what the goal is to do is to have these performance reviews done in September. And then obviously we'll have gone through budget time, so it won't, it won't be impacting that. But to give an update on, you know, any things, any outliers or anything that could be of concern or something that's noteworthy. And then every May or June have these perform per performance reviews done so that we can, you know, understand if there's any issues in the organization or if there's anything that should be adjusted in the organization from employees perspective. If there's something that maybe, you know, I don't see every day that someone has a concern of, or maybe someone doesn't have, or doesn't feel like there's an opportunity to grow. You know, it's just, it's for me to stay on top of employees needs in the organization. So I, I would definitely be updating the personnel committee on this. Bo, I'd, I'd like you to talk to the personnel committee about it before you do it, before you do anything, um, have that discussion with us. Um, and I would also add that you're on the top of the list for uh, a review uh, to start with. So maybe we start with you and go from there. Absolutely. Anything else on his report? Okay. Review of the financial statements, consideration of a motion to approve the monthly bills. How about somebody makes a motion to pay the bills? So moved. Um, second. Any discussion, any line items to look at? Tasha, do you want to add anything? I have nothing to add at this time. Pretty much in budget crazy mania here. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a couple questions. Absolutely. Page 81, the first page of the bills. Okay. Uh, 13260, it's Birdo's Marina Gas. And I was just wondering, is that LP for the yeah, that's probably okay. So I was going to think, and man, if we're doing two hundred seventy-five dollars in gas on that gas cart, uh, <laughs> golf cart. probably all summer long. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
um, the next one I had was page 82 or two on the bills, 30701 Frontier Phones. Um, and there's just a couple on there. So like the sports complex. So, so we have a hardwired phone at the sports complex? We do. We have a phone for, it's, it's mainly for the ice rink, but we can't shut it off the rest of the year. So. Okay. I was just wondering, so when they do the ice rink, who are they calling? An answering machine, usually. Usually it's an answering machine and whoever is at the ice rink gets back to them unless somebody at the ice rink is actually open. We get a ton of calls in the winter about the ice rink and condition of the ice and broom ball and all that stuff. Okay. All right. I, and I don't know, you know, I think we've talked about this before, but especially in that kind of scenario, it's getting used maybe six weeks of the year is, is. to go, go virtual that you can do all that on a, a PC or a laptop or a cell phone. Things can get forwarded, routed, messages answered, respond to be a, a lot easier and cheaper. I, I'd pay $6 a month for unlimited everything and and then the other thing I was just curious about and that same line item, so the plant water and then the plant wastewater. So we've got multiple phones. Is that, I'm thinking, is that because of the telemetry or again, we are paying $300 a month so people can answer phones? No, no, so there's, <clears throat> sorry, there's um, the plant phone um, is split between water and wastewater. But yeah, I believe that billing was $300 a month. I don't know if there was service on that one. It's not normally. Um, normally it's, let's see. Yeah, normally it is about $150 a month per water and wastewater. So the line is about $300 a month. Are they calling 900 numbers or what's going on out there? Um, I don't know. <laughs> That's the setup. I think some of that is some old old telemetry lines. And if you ever dropped them, there's no way you'd get them again. Yeah. So those, they, those will go away at some point because they're, they're all dry pairs. And Frontier's really gotten away from that, but. There is, there, I mean, I, a couple of years ago, I did a pretty in-depth analysis on it when Zeke was still around. There's several hundred dollars a month to be shaved off the phone bill if we, we do a comprehensive web system. Thanks for jumping in, Nate, because I have no idea. But, but yeah, that some first. of that stuff you can't take off because Frontier will never let you add it back again. But I, I think that maybe the SCADA system, I don't know where that's at, Bo, but that, that, that may replace some of that. The SCADA system will replace the telemetry um, billing. I don't, <coughs> excuse me, how much of the frontier bill it will replace. <coughs> Sorry. I just, one of those things I know we've talked about it, uh, Chris is on the line about the fire department too, going digital or, or virtual. I, you know, it just, it, it's really easy. It's very affordable and, um, you know, something Pat, it's going to be a little bit more for a for a phone system type thing. I think you've got a single line, which you can get. To, I mean, you can get a free phone line. Right? You get Google Voice. You get an Obiha. You, you ha I have a free phone line. It costs yeah. me nothing every month. But you do need to get something that's got a PBX on it, which is probably going to cost you ten to twenty five dollars a line. Still, a lot less. Yeah. yeah. I okay. don't know much about the phone lines, honestly. So I. So is that something that should be maybe put on an agenda for IT to talk about? Bo and I were supposed to talk about that in the beginning of March, but some things have happened since then. Yeah, <laughs> good point there. But yeah, it's something that we should definitely bring back up, yeah. Okay, um, so next I got page 86. Okay. 10041 feral gas. Yeah. It's the, I think it's the Marina Boathouse and it says a $25 tank rental. And I was just curious, is that a monthly tank rental, an annual tank rental? I wasn't sure if you knew. Heidi's shaking her head that it's a, it's a seasonal tank rental. Okay. All right. So we're not paying hundreds of dollars a year. It's a kind of a one-time thing. $25 a year. All right. Okay. And actually, it it's end up, ends up being paid by whoever's renting the boathouse. Got it. Okay. Last question. Page 87, 10011. 
um, Planet Tech for Microsoft subscriptions. And, and maybe these are much more extensive. Again, I've got three for Microsoft 365, Office, Cloud Backup, all that stuff. They're $86 a year. I'm just curious, are, do we have a much more robust, I mean, we got $2,500 worth of um, Microsoft annual. Yep. So we have, um, those are our Microsoft Office and email licenses. And actually our email is housed on their servers. Um, there's three different steps in those licenses. So we issued the top of the line licenses to only those who need them, which are pretty much the admin area. Um, and then a couple of department heads, not even all the department heads. Um, and then there's the next level, and that's a level that a lot of you guys are on as trustees um, and most of some of our other employees. And then there's a kiosk level, and the kiosk level is pretty much it's about, um, about the $86 a month. Um, and those are issued to our employees that rarely use email, and they don't have a lot of storage space on their account, so to speak. So. All right. I think we're paying for a lot of office licenses that we're not using, though, because I mean, I, I never use my Office 365. We've got a lot more than we really need for the trustees. I, I, I don't can't imagine anybody's using more than Word and Excel, if that even. I mean, right. I had tried to use it, and it said that um, my Surface was not hooked up, you know, to that or whatever. And um, so, because I have a personal license. I just you know signed in with my personal license and used it that way, but I I didn't even have it. I couldn't even do anything. Yeah, you guys have a watered down version of Excel and Word, and it's capable to be used on the the web based um, I don't know what do you call it web based portal web based system whatever your account is. If you would go out to Microsoft.com and sign in that way, you'd be able to use the apps from there. That's what um, the trustees have. So that you can open different documents and things that are sent by the employees. Well, that's interesting because I have the full programs downloaded on my desktop. I can put that on three different places per license and I've got umpteen terabytes of free storage space for $86 a year. And I can take it with me and like you said, anywhere from any computer, sign on and all my stuff is backed up. Everything's available. But I mean, I got all the hard programs downloaded that I could unplug my ethernet and I got everything fully functional right here at my desk. In interesting. I, mean, I, I go through Dell, they give small business pretty good deals, but I just thought I'd bring it up. I, that's all. If somebody's talked to them and they feel like they got Good, good thing, fine, but. How long is our licensing for? Is it an annual or is it a multi-year? Is it an annual license? Yeah. So it's always something we could take a look at. Yep, it's something we could take a look at, something the Common Tech Committee could take a look at. Just not now, right, Tasha? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, me. that's fine. And I'm, I, you know, it was just a question, that's all. It's, yeah, no, no, that's fine. That's it. Thank you. Anybody have you anything know? else on the bills? Okay. We'll wait to Chad to come back and we'll take our vote. You can do I'm listening. I'm just getting water. Sorry. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Carried. Thank you. Uh, committee reports. Admin has not met. Admin and comp has not met. Communications technology has not met. Coastal byways, we saw the results of that. DCE CD? Uh, the thing that we were talking about, it was a pretty short meeting. They were talking about um, one of the child care centers down in Sturgeon Bay and trying to support it. That was a big topic of conversation. There was also talk about the $550,000 they got the grant for and they're administering it and how the real, the real work starts now after they get the money and start distributing it. Who is the money intended for, Nate? I am not entirely sure. I, I, the, they, they, they applied for that. I was not there for when they applied for the grant. I know that they got it in the last month, and now they, are, they got it from 
the federal government somehow, and they have, we're, we're starting to disperse it. Well, I think it would be helpful if we can find out ultimately where it ends up going or, or what they're using it for. Okay. Economic development has not met. Finance be meeting in the near future. Fire. Next Monday. Maybe next Monday. Oh, oh maybe. Yes. Okay. Well, it still might meet, but I, I, I have to look at my schedule. I told okay. Tasha I was going to get back to her today and I forgot um, because of my schedule on Monday, but we'll figure it out. So anything on fire? Uh, minutes are in the packet, Dave, uh, from our August meeting. Um, mainly budget that we worked on. Um, anybody has any questions, uh, you could, I can try and answer or Chris is here if he's got any different points of view. Chris, anything to add? Yeah, I'll unmute. Um, yeah, we have, um, you know, as COVID is ticking up in Northern Door, we have four members of the department who have had COVID. Um, two of the three, th I think three of the four are actually recovered completely. Um, those three had minor symptoms. We have one that is still not completely recovered and uh, their symptoms were more significant, not to the, not to the level of hospitalization, but certainly to the level where when I talked to them today, today, you know, they reaffirmed that this is not a common cold or flu. They've never felt anything like it before. And again, it just it just reemphasizes how different it is across the board for everybody. Um, so we have suspended none of their none of their contacts and none of their um, infections were driven based on anything we were doing as a fire department, our meetings or our trainings. Um, but we have stopped having face-to-face -face meetings until we can have at least one degree of separation between the department. Um, and anybody with COVID. So if, if it's a department member or somebody living in, the, if living in the household of a department member, we won't meet. Um, and it's really unfortunate because we were just getting back into the groove when we were starting to see the, the participation really start to increase and people start coming back around. And now we had to put the brakes back on again. So um, I think it's gonna be a little bit that way, fits and starts for a while till we, um, till we push through it. Okay, any questions of Chris? Okay. Our district exploratory has not met. Historical Society. Uh, Dave, I was unable to attend again, but uh, I have talked to, uh, talked to him about, uh, number one, the accident. They have received estimates and a check from the insurance company. They want to get started on the reconstruction before uh, winter starts. Uh, um, the check was from our insurance company. This has not been settled. So, um, and the other point was the shadow, the Bunda boat. Um, they signed a contract uh, with the group. Um, John Fletcher, the attorney on the board for the Historical Society, had reviewed that. The group has raised in excess of sixty thousand dollars for the boat, so they're more than halfway there. So that's all I have on the news for the Historical Society. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to see the shadow continues to move along. So yeah. that's not a lost cause. Yeah. Holiday lighting has not met. Library? Um, minutes are in the packet. Did anybody have any questions? No, okay. Marina, Marina Fest. Marina uh, Fest. Some, there's some minutes in the packet and uh, Despite the you know uncertainty of the year, we've had good summer weather, which has helped, and uh, it looks as though the marina will be very similar to last year, if not even a little better in numbers, which is a little surprising, but ha happy to see. Marina Fest has not met. Right. You're gonna start planning for next year, though, right? We will. Parks. Parks met uh, yesterday and our chairman was unable to attend. And so we did all kinds of crazy things without him knowing. I know, and nobody will tell me what yet either. <laughs> <laughs> I trust all of you. <laughs> it's all the decorations, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I don't know if this is a parks thing or SBAA or what, but I've yeah. heard some rumors that several of the businesses are still intending to have tents and outdoor activities fall fest weekend with the idea that what they do on private property is up to them, which fine, I'm, I'm not weighing in on what they should, can, can't, whatever do. What you from? Um, what's that? What did you hear exactly? Because uh, a lot of us businesses got together and we're all pretty uniform, but we're not. Right. The only thing that and we this are was, doing- This was discussed at Parks last, last Parks meeting, Pat, that businesses could put tents up, but we didn't want sides on them. Okay. They were trying to get some protection from the weather, but we wanted to make sure social distancing and no, no enclosed spaces took place. It's more okay. of a fall thing to preserve our outside seating than it is to have bands playing or attract people. So uh, okay. and, and that's fine. nobody's doing that. I, I can't say 100%, but to my knowledge, I don't know of anybody that's trying right. to. And, it, and it's not going to be just for what would, would have been Fall Fest weekend. They're starting to do it now uh, to try and get some weather protection moving through the rest of September and October. Al, Al Johnson's Stabur is a good example. And Bo, you want to explain what the process is? Yeah, so basically what I'm asking business owners to do is to submit um, a request for that um, with an overhead view of the property showing me where the tent is going to be and just basically a confirmation that it's not in an, another, an additional enclosed area. And in fact, it's just to cover from the weather from overhead. So if you can see um, what Stabur has, they had uh, shown me in um, the, the overhead of the map. And then um, basically I wrote a temporary permit um, and had Dave look over it and we just approved it and uh, they keep a copy and we have a copy. So they know that it can be taken down at our discretion if we feel like they're abusing that power um, or we'll let them keep it going through fall. Okay, my only question or comment was gonna be if things, if a lot of people show up and there are unauthorized activities or whatever is done on their private land, whatever is fine, is just, you know, we normally put out a lot of garbage cans and there's a lot of effort to clean up afterwards. And since I think SBAA or the village has said, we're not gonna do that is, if all of a sudden a bunch of people came and now there's a big mess, I'm hoping there's gonna be participation or bills sent to these businesses that are encouraging or creating any issues, that, that's all. So what we discussed, Pat, was that people are gonna come regardless of whether we canceled it or not. Uh, there'll be a lot of people up here. We have talked about putting uh, additional porta potties uh, out and around to keep people from out of the restaurants uh, and, and trying to go inside and use. Um, and of course, look at this tent situation. Um, anything else to add from any from parks? I mean, we're, yeah, yeah. we're anticipating that there's going to be people show up whether we have it or not. We, Dave, we, yes. we, we kind of, at least in my view, I don't expect there to be more people uh, for Fall Fest or Pumpkin Patch or any fall weekend than there were for Labor Day. And we all did just fine Labor Day. You know, there was a lot of people around. I don't expect there to be more people. Even if they show up in numbers, there's going to be nothing for them to do. If they're not going to get a table underneath one of those tents, the normal service area, they're going to be turned away. So there's, I don't see it being a problem. And we talked about not even putting porta potties out. And if a business wants to put it out themselves, fine. But I can't imagine there's going to be more people in any of those weekends and there were for Labor Day. And we made it through Labor Day with the bathrooms we have. So I think there's a lot of fear that they're just gonna come in droves, but even if they do, they're just gonna be disappointed and they're gonna leave. There's not gonna be anything for them to do. We don't want them, you know, we, can, we only want what we can control and every business up here that I know feels the same way. And I do know of the hotels that I've spoken to and one that I work with very closely, they are book solid the rest of September and most of October, mm -hmm. certainly every weekend there's basically nothing available. And a lot of the weeks are even filled in where you might find a room or two, but for the most part, everybody's full. So yep. it, it is gonna continue like it did through Labor Day. Yep, they'll all be the same. Yep. Anything else, Parks? Yeah. Um, the one thing that, that you guys may want to address, and I don't know if this is a proper place to do it, but we've been getting calls from people wanting to know what the village's position is on trick-or-treaters. Do you guys have any direction to give us? Fire department. Personally, I think that we should not set a time and I really don't think that businesses should encourage groups of people 
going into other businesses for candy. I think, you know, I think Parks did approve um, uh, the fire station, the drive-through um, for the Lions, if they could have, you know, worked out a deal um, with Fire Chief Heck or whatever to organize that because we thought that was safe. But for us to determine specific hours and encourage that, I personally believe that that's wrong. I think we just should discourage it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Microphone's on. Yep, so, I, I would agree this year it should be, should be discouraged, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> One more year, I can't get my darn candy. <laughs> I mean, should that be an agenda item? So it's it's part of the fuller record and conversation at our next parks meeting. Sure, that's what we I mean, do. We do that at parks. Yeah. And then maybe even SBAA or or the village could you know just put out some PR or something on whatever that conversation entails and the decision then that's made. I agree. Okay. okay. Chris, Chris, are you planning on allowing uh, like a drive-through bank for to handy? Or what is what, what's the plan there? Yeah, so we've had some initial discussions in the last six weeks with the Lions, and they were going to base it on kind of on what the school was doing. If the school was back open, they were going to hopefully try to have something that more resembled what they've done in the past. And if the school was closed, then they were going to opt for the drive-through, where the kids drove through, stayed in the car, but were able to pick up. Um, prizes and candy and stuff like that as they drove through the station. If that now, I haven't talked to the, I haven't talked to them in probably two or three weeks, so I don't know where they're at if any of that's changed. Well I think some of us businesses would be willing to give a little bit of money towards candy for something like that. So don't be afraid to have them reach out to us. Okay, I'll pass that along. Thank you, Chad. Great. Those anything for normal normalcy for these kids or even if it's unique like that to drive through a fire station you can't be kind of cool as a kid and i think the more of that we can do all right personnel has not met but is meeting soon plan commission we see continue to see the results of that any questions about plan commission okay. while anybody's thinking about their questions um i just would like to um update the board even though it's probably not necessarily on anybody's radar other than the members of plan commission um, i have been working um with uh, nick devley and um tom from alliance his builder on their development agreement um, we I, I tweaked a bunch of things they finally got back to me yesterday most of it looked good they said they still had a couple of other questions some i could answer some will have an answer for um, in the near future um, one of the biggest concerns was the development agreement stating that um, the village was going to foot the bill for two hundred and thirty thousand um, dollars for the extension of sewer and water and um, Tapawat uh, would be on the hook for the balance. And Robert E. Lee had kind of estimated that the entire project, the extension would be $268,000. So that meant that the Devleys would be on the hook for $38,000. They were very concerned because um, it's kind of, well, it's not open-ended. It basically states if the bids come in higher, that they're just responsible for it. And they felt very uneasy on signing that document. Um, so about three weeks ago, um, after I had that conversation, I asked Bo to um, do something that the village normally does not do. And that was to ask Robert E. Lee to um, pull together uh, the bid documents so it could go out to bid so that they would know exactly um, what somebody would be willing to do the work for. Is it right in line? Is it a little bit over? Is it $100,000 over? And so um, I talked again with Nick today. Um, Tom from Alliance failed to tell Nick that three weeks ago. So that was news to him. So he felt really good about that. 
so that is moving forward. So I talked to Bo, he talked to Jared at Robert E. Lee. Um, they anticipate, uh, but I think he said the end of next week that those bid documents will be done. It'll take two or three weeks then after that, depending upon publishing, um, for it to go out before those bids would be returned. So um, the beginning of October, middle of October, um, we should have some hard numbers. And I think once we get those numbers, um, we'll all know what's going to go on or not going to go on. And um, hopefully we can continue um, moving this forward. So, and, and basically at this point in time, you know, this is, this is a spring project if, if those bids come in at a, a reasonable estimate with what Robert E. Lee thought. Yes, Chris? I guess I'd have two questions for you, Denise, or in general. One, um, regarding the sewer and water, it used to be, and maybe they are there, I don't know. It used to be when you extended sewer and water, you had to extend it all the way across your property, covered the entire length of your property. I don't know if that's if that's what they're doing or not. Um, and then second of all, does the development agreement talk at all about the possible closure of Orchard? It does not. The DOT won't let us close it, Chris, at this point. Okay. We continue to try and work with the DOT. As you know, we've tried that for years yep. and every option we come up with, they shoot it down. Well, they'll let us close it if, we, if we're gonna add the one, the second way in the scan, correct? We're, we're trying, they will not allow us to get the second way in the scan where we think we need to have it. And keep Orchard open, okay. Yes, right. Again, you know, my, when I brought this up at a previous planning commission meeting was, my fear is that we're gonna come to a resolve with the DOT and we're gonna come up with a solution. They're gonna close Orchard and now we're not gonna do it because we're, we are gonna lose the front highway access to, the, to Tapua. And again, you know my position is close Orchard. We have, we, you know, that's 20% of the population of the village of Sister Bay is served by a dead end street. Right. And it, it is a huge issue and it has been a huge issue. We continue to fight the battle. I know, I just, I'm just, and one, of the other, one of the other issues is we tried to get them to release or, or sell that triangle and they won't do that either. Yep. And so that really messes up the right of way issue. Okay. Oh, well, that's interesting because I had that same conversation with Bo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and Bo did not say that they're unwilling to sell it. Well, I didn't, I didn't know that. that never the last that. conversation we had with the DOT and asked them that they said, no, they would not. I don't Nick, think I was Nick, around. Nick asked, him, Nick asked them specifically, and he went to um, one of the DOT guys, and they said no, they were not willing to release that triangle. Yeah, he was working with Kent Grossman, and that and that was another reason, a conversation that I had with Bo today. Yeah. And Kent will not call him back for the last six months, right. and he just he Nick was concerned that if he did not own that property, then exactly where the pipes in the ground were going to go because the Kramers and Debbie's always presumed that that was part of their property. You know, I wasn't involved in those conversations. I don't know. So he it was concerned where the pipes go if the village or he does not own that property. Um, and it, it being an issue in, in, as we continue to move forward on, on this project. So, so I, I don't want to say this incorrectly or improperly. We never know who's recording, who's listening. But my understanding was we were told by the DOT that Mr. Grossman does not control the sale of that property and that he's not the one that should be contacted as far as having that occur. Okay, and that's very interesting because what Nick told me today was that when he's when uh, Mr. Grossman has not called him back and Nick periodically still trying to make that contact and then he wants to talk to somebody else, everybody else tells him Mr. Grossman's the only person that you can talk to about this. Yeah, Mr. Grossman's boss told us last time 
we went into this was that they were not going to release the triangle and that um, Mr. Grossman can make the recommendations, but he's not the approval of that parcel. Okay, can, um, at, at, a, at a later date, mm -hmm. can, you, can you and I have a, a private conversation about this so sure. I can share the new information then with the Devleys? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay, um, SBAA. Okay, the minutes are included, but I wanted to make note of our amazing Louise has put together a Fall Fest box, which is on page 114 in your notes. And so she's, well, SBAA is selling boxes to keep the enthusiasm up and ready for Fall Fest, the 75th anniversary, which will be next year. And that particular box to keep the process going is getting a lot of media coverage, a right. lot of media coverage. It's actually out on Google News of all places. Wow. So that shows up across all of the major um, news feeds online. I'm, I'm thinking we need to give Louise a new title and I'm thinking like maybe our own wizard of welcome or something. She's just amazing. I'm just I'm awed by her. She's superwoman. Yes. Okay, any questions for SBA? Tourism Zone Commission. Okay. Um, the Destination Door County is reporting a lot of the same things that the SBA is um, reporting. Fewer in-person visits, more web traffic, younger clientele. Um, they've hosted some individual tourists, mostly from the Midwest, to try and encourage articles encouraging tourism. Um, they've run some surveys to determine if people feel safe and plan to travel. The last one, 60% of people were still saying yes, they plan to travel August through October. 96% said they'd be willing to wear a mask. Um, their destination door county is encouraging social distancing, masking, and hand washing. Uh, um, there's some issues with, oh, they've also put on hold their project for the new center down in Sturgeon Bay. And um, there's some issues with the uh, marketplace providers. These are Airbnb and VRBO, and basically it's there's a lot of, um, when they send the money to each community, there's no itemization. And so it's really hard to figure out if it's the right amount. And a lot of times it's actually too much and they don't know where it's coming from and where it should be. And it's just very hard to get either of those organizations to uh, give them more information, even to the, uh, the owners of the properties. And so, um, the tourism zone is actually working on figuring out how to force them to allow audits. It's a very interesting problem. Okay, yeah. any questions about tourism zone? Utilities. Uh, we did meet on Tuesday. Um, let me swing fast down here. On Tuesday, September 8th, uh, most of both meetings had to do with were budget related. Um, we did approve, approve a uh, extension of water and sewer to two properties at the end of Little Sister Road under the um, um, we re under the understanding that the village would receive payments for the thirty thousand dollars that we spent on engineering fees um, several months ago okay any questions of the utilities youth center has not met ad hoc ice rink committee did they report at the parks? 
Was there a yes, discussion? We had okay. A long conversation, and um, we have some definite direction, um, kind of a little bit of a different direction. Um, the original, um, the ad hoc ice rink committee came up with um, how to best fix the ice rink in, in its current state was to. Um, put asphalt on top of the concrete. I think everybody knows it's very difficult to put concrete on top of concrete and it's never gonna hold. Uh, it'll never mesh together, the old and the new. Um, so they came up with the asphalt. Um, someone on the committee contacted Dennis Pigeon and uh, he had given a ballpark figure of about $60,000. A, um, I think it was at the last month's meeting then we asked, you know, for a couple of other quotes. Um, Tom Ash met with Louise um, out at the ice rink. She told him what it was that we wanted. He said, that's not good enough. So he, what he proposed, um, and it basically it's kind of verbal, it wasn't an email, it's not a true quote with all different kinds of specifications um, was double that $120,000, but it was very different than Dennis Pigeons because Tom Ash felt that there was a much, the end product would be much better if we did it his way. So we were, you know, we're looking for someone else to talk to. And um, we realized that um, nothing pertaining this asphalt is going to happen this year. So plan B is going to be, um, we are going to fill it in with three quarter inch gravel and level it to the best that we can. Well, first it's gonna be painted white. Um, then we're gonna fill it in with three quarter inch gravel. Then we're going to put plastic over that and then it will be flooded. Um, so they are hoping with um, uh, parks um, pressure washing it. I know that they did it last year. They're probably going to do it again to get some of those spots off. And then um, we did contemplate um, getting some quotes from different local painters to paint it, but Brian Fitzgerald and the committee felt that they would be able to find some volunteers um, to do that so there wouldn't be any cost. It would just be the cost of the paint, which uh, they thought maybe would be a couple of hundred dollars. Um, so that's moving forward, um, plan B. So we're gonna continue to discuss this asphalt um, fix, a little bit more of a permanent fix, and um, see who, who else is out there? And, and we were very happy to a certain degree that Tom Ash from Northeast Asphalt didn't just give us a price for what we wanted, but said, this is what, what you should do, even though it was double, double the price. And so we're going to look for somebody else to kind of do the same thing. Tell them what we're looking for, what do you suggest? And then somehow we're gonna to have to rifle through that information and uh, granted it's a huge chunk of money and determine you know, where we go from there you know, once we kind of narrow everything down and, and, and analyze everything. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions about that? Okay. Emergency Management Plan Committee has not met. Consider a motion to convene an executive session pursuant to Wisconsin Statutes 19.851C to deliberate or negotiate the purchase of. Uh, way too small. What? Can I interfere for once or interrupt for one second? Yes. You want a motion to accept the. Oh, committee? yes. Yes. Yep, you're right. Just thought. So I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, minutes of the committees as presented. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. All right. Let me go back to this little bitty print here. Consider a motion to convene an executive session pursuant to Wisconsin Statutes 19.851E to deliberate or negotiate the purchase of public properties, invest in a public conduct other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session of Wisconsin Statutes 19.851G 
to confer with legal counsel for governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is likely to become involved. Motion by Lino. Second. Second. Roll call, Lino, yes. Baker, yes. Bell, yes. Berto, yes. Duffy, yes. yes. Could I go yes? Oh, definitely. Did everybody say yes? Did Vivian, did I get you? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, so we're now in closed session. Anybody who's not.